Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Swift Tech 8600 series water cooling kit. What's included in this kit is a very detailed installation guide. I have two red eaters. Each one of these come with two of these quick connect adapters. These adapters make it very easy and also a secure way of connecting the tubes into the red eaters. I'll show you how that works. The adapter itself simply slips on, push it all the way down, then the tube goes in the top and push that all the way down. These radiators also include an 80 millimeter fan. This fan has a three pin power connection and also the fan comes with a grill. The overall construction on these radiators is great. You can see it also has a very high gloss paint finish. But most importantly, it has a high density copper thin configuration for enhanced heat dissipation. These also come with screws for mounting them. Now something else in this kit that includes these quick connect adapters is the CPU water block. All copper construction which has nice smooth base and that's going to allow excellent contact between it and the CPU. I also have a chipset water block again great overall construction on this very easy to install the tubes here and they're going to be secure as well and the base on this is copper and smooth and again allowing great contact between it and the chipset. The pump that's included is a 700 liter per hour or 185 gallon per hour pump which can be connected right into your power supply. And at the base of the pump they have a sticky bottom. You can peel this off and stick it right on your case. I also recommend bolting this on the bottom of your case. Of course doing that will mean that you will have to drill two holes in the bottom of your case but that will secure it there and they do include the bolts for that. They also include a fill and bleed assembly, some coolant, and cool sleeves and these go over the half inch tubing which included. They also include some twist ties and thermal compound etc. Installing the CPU water block is very simple. However, there is a correct and incorrect way to do this. I'll show you the incorrect way first. This is incorrect. This is incorrect. This is correct. Or this is correct. Bearing in mind that the orientation of the motherboard up is this way. Now let's go ahead and install this CPU water block. First of all, pop in the CPU, apply some thermal compound, and carefully place the CPU water block on top. Then place the hole down, and next use the two spring clips included on either side, and you can really see how easy this is. This design does not require you to remove the motherboard. Installing the chipset water block is a little more work. First of all, remove the existing chipset cooler. Next, clean off any residue left on the chipset. Apply some new thermal compound. First, attach these two pieces of metal on either side of the chipset water block with these two screws using the included hex wrench. And before you install the chipset water block, be sure to place four of these neoprene pads around the chipset. The trickiest part to the installation of the chipset water block is what I'm about to show you next. They include a spring, a nylon washer, a hook with threads on the end, and a nylon nut. Now this is how it works. You've got these metal parts already attached on either side. You take the nylon spacer and the spring, push the spring down over the nylon spacer. Then you can take the hook and put it up through. 
And before you put that nylon nut on top, slip it down through like so and hook it into that metal loop that's on the motherboard. And let me just go to this one over here right now. And what you need to do is hold here at the center and just push down the spring here so you can just barely get this nut to take hold and don't bother screwing it all the way down yet. Now let me go ahead here and attach the other side and then go ahead and fasten two of these nuts all the way down. This is what it looks like when everything is installed. Now, of course, there are hours of work between this and what I showed you a second ago. Three important things to remember when installing any internal water cooling kit is read the manual first. You're going to need lots of time and lots of patience. If you have those three things, everything should go great and you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever with the water cooling set up. Now one of the first things you want to do is cut the different lengths of tubing and you want to do this accurately because you don't want any excessive tubing inside the case. Once you've done that you can install all the different components and then put these cool sleeves on the tubing that's bent. That's really all it's intended for. It's not really intended for look but it does look kind of cool so do that first and then if you have any left over you can see here what I've done I've got some here 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 and over there well I still have some left over so if you want to just for look to match everything up you can then do all the other tubes but again this is just for the tubes that are bent I will not be going into great detail on how to fill and bleed or completely discharge this system but I will just generally go over how it works. It's quite simple really. That fill and bleed assembly I showed you early in the review, well that is installed at the top here in a five and a quarter inch drive bay. You have three valves on it. When you are filling the system you will need to have the main valve closed and the inlet and discharge valve open. Of course you will need two tubes to be connected at the front. Both of those go into a bottle which will contain the coolant as well as one liter of distilled water. And gravity will pull the liquid into the system. Once it's fairly full you want to turn the pump on. The pump will do the rest. Make sure no bubbles left in the system. Once you do that you can then close the inlet and the discharge valve, remove the tubes and remember to open up the main valve. That is very important otherwise the pump will not cycle the liquid through the system. The direction of flow will vary depending upon which components you have so please refer to the manual but in my particular case it will come out of the pump here at the top as cool water, go into the CPU water block, then proceed into the chipset water block, then go into the RADS, out of the RADS, up into the fill and bleed assembly, and then back down the pump will then continue that cycle over and over. Now have a listen to just the pump, and now the two fans on the radiators. Whether you're into extreme overclocking or maybe you just want to have a system that's relatively quiet. Either way, this kit will easily satisfy. Overall, this is a kick-ass product. 
Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds. This has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you there. Also, pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com. And while you're there, you can go into the forums and register. And remember, registration is completely free. Also, keep in mind, you can find out a lot more on this product in the forums. And as a final note, if you love watching my video reviews, please help support 3dgameman.com. Until the next time, take care.